Hello, my name is Jörg Müller and I'm the Google Summer of Code student for 3D Audio. This is my first video about what I've done so far. The most changes so far have been internally, so don't show up to the user. Um, you might want to skip some parts of this video if you're not interested into them. I think the most interesting parts come at the end of the video. So what I'm going to start with are some internal and memory management changes that led to a speed improvement and also enable Python scripters to access Blender internal sounds, what hasn't been possible before. So to demonstrate this I have here the main sound test file from the subversion repository and I'm going to do a little game engine demo to show how to change the sound of such a sound actuator. So I'm adding a new scene. I'm adding the Tetris script I wrote last Google Summer of Code, which basically synthesizes the Tetris title melody. And I'm also going to need another script for the for accessing the sound. So I add a simple cube here, and in the logic window. I'm going to do some really simple game logic. So I add two keyboard sensors. One key will just play the sound and the other key will change the sound to our synthesized one. And finally we for sure need, need a sound actuator. So now typical game engine stuff. And now I can set the actuator's sound. And I'll also lower the volume a little as the Tetris sound is quite loud. So now let's test this out. I press A to play back the siren sound. Now I press S to execute the script and press A again. And you can hear the Tetris sound. So this works now. And you can also access uh, the loaded sound blocks. You can see here for example we have three sounds loaded in this file drum, pink panther and siren and if I want to play back one of those via Python I just do the following and I choose the pink panther one and with a sound block I can use dot .factory to access the Python sound and play this back. So, now what I'm going to do next is some general instruction to what 3D audio is. I've changed to the basic test scene here and you can see four cubes, one is behind this sphere here, uh, that play the same sound, the siren sound, at different pitch rates. So if you got a, a pitch greater than one, you get a higher tone, and if it's lower than one, you get a lower tone. And also from different positions. So uh, let's just try it out. And now I play the cube in front of us. Now to the left. Now in the back and to the right. So especially if you wear headphones you should have heard that the sound really comes from left, right and so on. And now I let the sphere rotate around us and also play the siren sound. So that's 
basically has been possible before if you used OpenAL because OpenAL has 3D audio capabilities but if you used one of the other output um, devices like SDL or Jack this hasn't been possible before and that's what I've implemented and I'm recording this with, with Jack so uh, it pretty shows how this works already so then we have some cone properties where it's possible to get directional sound sources basically like spotlights but you can try this out on your own and another thing I'd like to show is the so-called Doppler effect um, depending on the speed at which an object moves relative to you you can hear uh, the sound it's playing at a different pitch if it comes nearer the tone is higher and if it goes away from you the tone is lower so let's just try this out I hope you heard it especially when the object passed and what you may also have noticed is that depending on the distance uh, the volume of the sound gets louder or lower so this is also some 3D audio property. So what I want to show next is in the properties. The scene properties have a new audio panel and here you can set several settings that are relevant for 3D audio. There is also a new volume which changes basically the overall volume of the sequencer audio strips and is also animatable then for animation we have a bake animation button we will come to that in a few seconds and you have the <coughs> rate and channel count settings here where the channel count settings are new you can now choose uh, how many channels you want to export in your audio file when you render the animation so let's come to the sequencer animation we go back to the basic test scene here where we've got uh, the pink panther OTG loaded into the sequencer and I'll change this to a graph editor here and we will now animate this so I first try to animate the volume and now I have to tell you that there are some problems regarding audio animation because originally the animation system for Blender has been designed for video and not for audio and there's been a discussion on the committers mailing list to how to solve this problem and we basically came up with uh, solving it by using an intermediate cache um, the problems that arise with that is that the cache might not be up to date so to always keep it up to date we have this bake animation button here if you click on it nothing happens to what you can see and it's quite fast but it updated the internal caches of the audio system so if I play back now you can already hear that the animation works so volume animation worked before due to some very strange hack um, but now I've also added pitch and you can also animate pitch so to show the effect of this I'm going to animate this bake again This is how pitch works. So also a feature request has been panning and panning only works for mono sound sources. That's uh, why I'm deleting the Pink Panther right now and add a sound from Sintel which I made a mono sound file out of and I'm going to animate the panning here now. So panning of zero is basically the source is in front of you. Panning of minus one 
is to the left and the panning of one is to the right and we go back to center fake this and play back come take my journey into night come be my shadow walk at my side and when you see So that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you soon.